What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Elementary Season 5, Episode 7. <sighs> don't make me say it. Please don't make me Bang, bang, shoot, shoot. The puns couldn't get any worse. I mean, they've had some really, really bad titles for episodes this season. The, the Henny Penny... Falling, the sky is falling? D c come on! What the heck? Anyway, so aside from the title being a really bad pun, this episode was good. You know, it wasn't spectacular, it wasn't anything amazing, it wasn't bad, but it was, it was good. You know, it was average, it kind of what I expect out of an elementary episode. The case itself just is what makes this episode. You know, the stuff on the outside, I'll talk about that in a second. But I, I want to talk about the case, because one of the things I love about what they do in the show most of the time, sometimes the cases can get really out there, they can be really frustrating or hard to comprehend or hard to follow at times. What I like about most of the cases is nothing happens for no reason. You know, it's not like like, Bones is an example I love to bring up, because a lot of their cases are just really dumb. You know, there's so many times where, oh, let's see, here's a person who was doing something in the community and also had a little bit of, you know, had some dark secret in the background. So, let's see, was anybody affected by them doing the community? Yes, let's question them, not them. Okay, let's move on. Oh, it turns out he was also working for this underground organization, stopping some big bad corporation. Let's question them. Not them? Okay, let's move on. Turns out he was having an affair. Let's check the wife. No? Okay. Let's check the person he was having an affair with. No? Okay. So what could it be? And then they find out something at the very end that ties into nothing half the time. And it's just like, oh, that's who did it. And it's for some random reason that really tied into nothing that we were talking about the rest of this episode. You know, that, that wasn't every episode, but it felt like at least half of the episodes went like that. Like, the cases are not that good on Bones, at least the past couple seasons. On Elementary, you look at this case, and it starts off with, okay, they're looking into this, you know, base jumping thing. They're looking into it, and they find out, you know, the partner, they find out that something happened, somebody died, uh, one, of, one of their friends slash co-workers died earlier, so they're questioning them about that. Okay, so that, you know, maybe not, you know, maybe we'll, we'll talk about it more. They go to the wife, find out she didn't want him to jump, so they're, well, you know, okay, so she didn't want him to jump, why would she sabotage him? Okay, maybe not her either. So they find out that the guy who died had a sister, they go to her, she has excellent marksmanship, so maybe she's the shooter. Turns out, no, you know, she has an alibi, she didn't sabotage his shoot. In fact, killing him would have ended up messing up her plan, you know, have him write a book for her brother. So, most likely not her. We find out that the guy who's doing the base jumping, he actually had a side business where he was smuggling people into the country, and we find out he's smuggling in a Taliban warrior. So it's like, okay, now this could be a good reason. So they're questioning him about it, questioning him about it, and it turns out, no, nothing to do with that. This guy isn't even really a warrior, he was just pretty much forced into it. So, what could it possibly be? Well, they find out who the guy is that was helping the victim bring these people in. They go to question him, and he admits to sabotaging the parachute. And Sherlock notices something, and I, I wish I wish they were more focused on Sherlock. That is my one complaint about the show in general, is that they're not focused enough on Sherlock. If you watch Sherlock on BBC, that show is all about Sherlock. You see how he makes the deductions. You see how he's figuring this out. He explains sometimes how he figures it out. This Sherlock, it feels like he doesn't explain enough how he comes to these deductions. If he does, it's so rushed that it's just like, wait, what? Like, I wish we could see more from his eyes. I wish we could see, like, he walks in there, he sees the guy has a unibrow, and he thinks back to... Okay, that girl, she trims, so she must have a unibrow. And he starts, that's where his mind starts going. He starts thinking about that. He wants the guy to remove his gloves because he wants to see about the hair on his hand. You know, he doesn't have any hair there. He knows that she doesn't have any hair on her hands either, the victim's wife. So they have to be related. You know, it's, 
it's pretty much a statistical like certainty that they're related at that point. And so of course that's immediately where his mind goes. As soon as he figures out they're related, he realizes that he's covering for her because she's his daughter. And ultimately we find out he was having an affair. Now you at first I was like, seriously? Like where did this come from? Like I I love the fact that they've already questioned her, they brought her back in, and it turns out she's the the, the culprit for the sabotage. But the affair, like what what does that have to do with anything? It just seems out of nowhere. Well, we come to find out that apparently he was having an affair with the two, the Taliban warrior and his his daughter. He was having an affair with his daughter. And so ultimately we realize that the son of this Taliban warrior is the one that shot him. So it's, I, I just love how it all kind of connected together. You know, the affair at first seemed like it was just out of nowhere. And it's like, oh no, who's he having the affair with? <laughs> the daughter of the Taliban warrior that he brought in. That ties it all together. And ultimately, it was kind of... It was a bit emotional at the end. Like, we see the brothers about to kill his sister. Because, you know, he feels like she has completely wronged the Taliban because she was dating an American. So he get, he's about to snipe her. And ultimately, they show up just in time to save her. And you see the look on his face. Like, he's just kind of... He's kind of scared. You know, like, he... It's like he doesn't know what to do in that moment. Like, at one... He wants to go down fighting. He wants to go down shooting, but at the same time he knows Bell brings up his family and says they don't want to see you die. They they sent us. They want you to live. So I just I don't know, it's a very emotional ending to it all. And it all wrapped up very nicely. You know, just really good overall case. Just I enjoyed following it. I enjoyed kind of catching the clues here and there. You know, not really able to figure out overall, but I feel like part of that has to do with the fact that we're not seeing it from Sherlock's point of view. It's all from an outside party. You know, we're watching in as they're doing all of this. So, you know, I, I haven't really talked about that before, but it became more apparent to me whenever he told the guy to take his gloves off. I'm like, I want to know how he noticed this and figured this out. So, but all in all, good case. The problem for me is on the outside, and this is where it's sort of balances out where the case is really good but then the stuff on the outside is not as good so it kind of balances into an overall good episode the stuff on the outside is just not intriguing enough I mean, you really look at every season the first season had some shadowy person named M in the background who killed Irene and you know the whole Moriarty storyline was starting to get brought up and like okay I want to see more of this second season Sherlock's brother comes in he's working with Interpol and there's some shady stuff going on in the background there Third season, Kitty gets introduced, I think. Her name was Kitty. I can't remember now. I want to say Kitty for some reason, so hopefully that's her name. But, you know, his his apprentice, Sherlock's apprentice, gets brought up, and we realize she's got a backstory, and then Sherlock's backstory with drugs starts getting brought up, and, you know, all, all the stuff there where that guy was trying to force him into a relapse. And so, although not as heavy-hitting as Moriarty or Sherlock's brother, it was still an emotional season overall. Four seasons, Sherlock's dad gets introduced, and then there's a possibility of him being assassinated, and there's another person working in the background that took over for Moriarty whenever she got arrested. So it's all of this build-up in all of these seasons. This season we have Shinwell and Joan, and that is the that is the running storyline right now. Not enough. It's not... It's not intriguing enough. It was intriguing for one episode. You know, seeing Joan go through that, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's nice. I wonder if they'll bring him up more. They're making it like he is the main storyline overall. Like, this is what we're going to be focusing on. Is him, is he going to go back and start working with the people? This is it? This is Sherlock Holmes here. We could do some cool stuff with this. We could have him taking on a huge criminal organization. We could have him taking on assassins. Why not assassins? We can have him taking on a group of ninjas. We can have him taking on a corporation who pays everybody off and is killing people but is not paying for it because everybody is you know, turning a, a blind eye to it and he is trying to take them on. He's trying to bring them to light. We can do so much with this. And you're giving me Shinwell and Joan. And that's it. I threw something. It was a little piece of plastic. I wish I had more to throw, but... 
I can't throw my phone. I, I don't understand it. I really don't. Like, while there were some iffy moments here and there, like the first season I thought ended well. You know, how they handled the whole Moriarty storyline, it was ended very well. Second season, a little bit iffy with its ending. You know, wasn't bad, but still wasn't as good as I thought it could have been. Third season, kind of an intense ending where it feels like, you know, what's going to happen? Is Alfredo going to die? What's this guy doing? Is Sherlock going to relapse? And ultimately it seems like, okay, he's not, and then he does. It's like, holy crap, you know, what a twist. And in the fourth season, all this build up with his father, and it ended really poorly. You know, the main villain they've been building up for several episodes gets killed off screen by Sherlock's father. And that was it. No climax, no Sherlock figuring it out, no Sherlock saving the day. That was it. It was such a poor ending, I'm like, what was this? Well, I'm looking forward to the fifth season. Maybe they'll turn things around. They haven't. It's actually gotten worse. It's gotten less interesting. It's it's like they don't really know what to do. It's like they've lost all of their ideas. Okay, well, we did Moriarty already. We did his brother. We did him getting an apprentice again. We did his father now. I've run out of ideas, guys. What else we got? Well, why don't you bring back his brother or his father? Or maybe even bring back Moriarty. Nah, that's that's... We can't do that again. We've we've already we've only done it for one season. We can't do it for another season. That's just that's too much. Why not do it for another season? Why not bring somebody in for another season? That would be so good. It would be so interesting to see. Okay, Sherlock's brother's back in town. What are they gonna do now? You know, Joan, is she going to go back to him? Is there going to be any connection there? What's the purpose of him being back? What if Sherlock's father is still around? You know, what if we're dealing with the ramifications of Sherlock's father taking over for this organization? and trying to dismantle it from within. What if he's not actually trying to dismantle it from within? What if he's really using the power and the authority to corrupt? You know, what if he's misusing his power? What if Sherlock had to go against his own dad? That would be interesting. What if they brought back Kitty or whatever her name was? What if she is now, like, I don't know, working for Moriarty or something? So much you can do, and it's just so much wasted potential. And that's ultimately what I see this season as so far. There have been some good cases, there have been some good emotional moments for either Sherlock or Joan, but overall, there's so much wasted potential as far as stories you could do in the background of all these cases. So, I don't know if they're going to end this at halfway through the season and pick up another story later on, but for right now, I'm not interested to see what's going to happen with Shinwell. I figure... Either he's going to go back with his gang and start doing stuff for them and then Sherlock and Joan are going to try to stop him or, I don't know, maybe he'll decide to turn over a new leaf. I just, I don't see anything interesting coming out of this. I don't see anything intense. You know, maybe he'll get shot and that will be intense, but frankly, I don't even really care about him right now. You know, the way he treats Joan is kind of dickish, so, I don't know. I'm frustrated. Hopefully they can change it. Hopefully they can do something better second half of the season but for right now I'm disappointed with the overall story however like I said the case was good enough to make this a good episode so those are my thoughts on this episode let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below what you like and dislike about this episode let me know we can talk about discuss all that good stuff leave a like and subscribe for future elementary reviews I'll see you at the next one peace out